Hello everyone, it's Gigabeef here and today I will show you why I think the AK-101 is probably the best mid-game 5.56 weapon overall, which is important because M856A1 ammo is very strong once unlocked, is cheap too and deals with class 4 very well at this point in progression with decent damage for an intermediate cartridge. First and foremost, the AK-101 was also strong in the last patch but since the buffs to recoil it has become extremely good in 0.13. Horizontally, it's now equivalent to the SCAR-L, which was historically THE horizontal recoil gun, but it has better innate vertical recoil control stats as well. The SCAR-L and the MDR are the closest comparable guns because they all have the same fire rate of 650 RPM, but as we well know, there's not really that much you can do with the SCAR and especially the MDR, whereas the AK-101 is part of the regular AK family in terms of compatibility with modifications and parts. This means that you can scale the customization of the 101 far more greatly than these other weapons and some very good builds can be created without spending actually too much. What sets it apart from the regular 545 equivalents though is the CNC Warrior Muzzle Adapter. This lets the 101 take regular 556 muzzle brake and suppressor combinations, which is one of the best features of 556 guns in general which are severely lacking on the 545 caliber weapons. In this way, the 101 gets the best of both, cheap modding from its AK base, plus powerful and cheap recoil reducing muzzle attachments borrowed from the 556 world. It's worth pointing out that there is one big downside to the 101, which is the lack of larger magazines. You are stuck using 30 rounders, which at 650 RPM is fine, but can occasionally get you killed, especially when using M856A1 ammo against class 5 users, as those armors have the ability to absorb quite a few shots. A very brief mention of the AK-102, which is the shorter variant that still uses 5.56 ammo. I don't think it's worth using this gun over the 101 for a few reasons. Firstly, the weapon is shorter, which gives a little more ergonomics, but it restricts the handguards that you can use, which can make it harder to get good recoil numbers cheaply. Secondly, the fire rate is 600 RPM rather than 650 on the 101. While this doesn't sound like a lot, it's nearly 10% slower for time to kill, and as the 101 gets so good anyway, we barely make any discernible improvements to controllability for taking that time to kill downside. So on to the builds. The AK-101 is a Mechanic 3 weapon in theory, so you'll need at least level 30 to buy it from him for around 45k, but it can be found on the flea market fairly readily. It is currently a fairly popular gun, so it's not entirely uncommon to see this trading 20k or so above the trade of value, so keep an eye out and don't go crazy buying them if it's pushing the high end of pricing, as this can affect the overall cost effectiveness of the weapon quite a bit. For now, let's just assume that we can get one at or around the trader price. Firstly, let's make the lowest recoil build just to see what is possible, and then we'll do a budget build and finally something in between. For going all ergonomics, the standard conventional lowest recoil build starts with the Troy full length rail handguard and gas block combo, which has minus 4.5% recoil, and onto this we add the QARS rail. These are Mechanic 4 attachments, so they aren't feasible before level 40. Onto this we use the RK2 for now and add the CNC Warrior adapter to the muzzle. Here the best in slot is still the Silencer Co ASR Flash Hider and a Saker ASR Suppressor over the top for a combined 23% recoil reduction from the muzzle. Next we swap the stock over to the 74M AK100 lock and then a PT3 stock. Finally we remove the rear sight and add the Bastion cover, the improved magazine, the AGS74 ergonomic pistol grip and the CSS knurled charging handle. Overall, this gets us to 44 ergonomics and 37 recoil, which is really good stats-wise given that we went with the most recoil reducing parts at any cost to ergo. Normally the ergo of these guns is on the floor, but not with the AK-101. Now I will probably get asked about it if I don't quickly go over these. There are some unconventional ways to get recoil lower than this, but they make the weapon far less usable. Firstly, the new underbarreled grenade launchers that were added in 0.13 do in fact give minus 8% recoil, which is really a lot, presumably due to their weight. We do have to forgo a foregrip and use specific handguards to make it work, but it does make it lower. Before we had 4.5 from the Troy, 4 from the RK2, and 1 from the Bastion for 9.5% total. Swapping this to the UBGL for 8%, we're then only allowed two handguards, of which both give 2% recoil reduction, but the B10M is 3 better on ergo. With this, we can use the B33 cover instead with 1.5% recoil reduction, which comes to 11.5% overall, and the recoil itself is then 34, at the cost of 26 ergonomics. Then, if we swap to a regular cover and lose the 1.5 bonus from the B33, we can, as before, use the night vision scope with 5% on it for a net benefit of 3.5% recoil, taking our overall AK-101 to 30, which is pretty silly. 
popping a canted on it makes it technically usable, but this is clearly for later on in the wipe when we've all got more money than sense. Even using the eye cup for the NV scope only brings us up to one ergonomics total. So knowing where the limits of the weapon are, let's do a budget build next. Starting at 51 ergonomics and 72 recoil, this 101 is really not that bad out of the box, and the most important part about AKs in general is the butt pad, locked behind Gunsmith 6 these days. With 5% recoil reduction, this starts us off in a great place. For handguards, we're looking for something with 2% recoil reduction or more. Often it's useful to check the flea for any of these, which can be done by linked searching the gas tube, looking at the handguards and having a scroll through. The new AK CNC guns is 2.5%, but it limits your cover, so you lose the 1% not having the bastion on. The Strike Tracks 1 from Mechanic 2 is a pretty good choice, although slightly light on ergonomics at plus 6, and sometimes you can find the MOE AKM versions with 10 ergo going fairly cheaply. The cool thing about the Trax 1 is that you can add the Trax Bridge and the Trax 2 handguard piece after it for another 1% recoil coming to 3% total and a further 5 ergonomics, so plus 11 between the two, and it's all on Mechanic 2. Then using the RK4 if you have Skier 2 only, or the RVG if you have Peacekeeper 3, we add our foregrip. The FDE one is slightly cheaper, but it spoils the aesthetic a little bit if you care for that kind of thing. With the muzzles, the CNC Warrior is the one that we talked about before from Mechanic 3, but it requires Gunsmith 17 to be completed before you can buy it from him. You do get 4 from Skier's Quest Informed Means Armed, so be sure to keep those if you want to use this gun, but otherwise it's often around 10,000 rubles on the flea, which isn't actually too bad. Once this is on, we can choose any of the suppressors that we want. The cheapest choices fluctuate, but are often either the QDC NT4 combo or the SF3P, plus one of the compatible suppressors, such as the Surefire Monster. Use linked search here again to check which is the cheapest at the time. For pistol grips, the saw is cheap and easy on Mechanic 2, or for one extra ergonomics, the Tango Down is about 3k more on Skier 3. Now let's just stick on the Bastion cover so that we can mount an optic, and the build is done. Free scopes, this comes to 56 ergo and 50 recoil, which is very respectable and comes in at around 132k, including the gun. An alternative to save money is to forgo that extra tracks part if you want, or go unsuppressed as well. The RRD on Mechanic 3 is a very powerful muzzle that is only accessible to AKs, which means that you can get good recoil on the AK-101 without using a suppressor combo, another relatively unique feature of the 101. This slightly cheaper version of the build comes to around 93k in total, with 66 ergo and 49 recoil, which should really be snappy and super inexpensive. For those who don't have Mechanic 3, the PWS CQB muzzle is an alternative if you don't have the trader levels, but you do lose 8 recoil for putting this on. Finally, for a power min-max build, we need to use the Mechanic 3 only gas tube, the VDM. I talk about this one all the time, as it lets you mount the Krebs handguard, which has 3% recoil and 11 ergo, and we'll combine this with an RVG foregrip again and the CSS charging handle. Unsuppressed, this gets to 75 ergonomics and 48 recoil. The question is, is it ever worth changing the stock on these guns? The PT3 adds 4 ergonomics and removes 2 recoil, but it costs 26k. You can get this if you really want to, but normally I just stick to the butt pad version. On high-end suppressors, the Seika is the best, as we saw, and would change our build to 53 ergo and 42 recoil, but there are two other alternatives that have some different features. The Thor combo, comprising of the PSR muzzle, and the Thor suppressor has the same recoil reduction but 5 worse ergonomics, i.e. gets us to 48 and 42. Alternatively, the G-Lock muzzle and Griffin M4 SDK is half a recoil point worse than the Seika, but a 4 ergonomics improvement. I would argue that this suppressor combo is actually meta for that reason. Outside of these, my go-to is usually the Thunderbeast combo, as you can barter for the suppressor with 1 Tagilla cap and 2 leather caps, and it's also a very light suppressor, which has a small impact on arm stamina. Going with this, our build comes to 52 ergo and 44 recoil. This is very powerful and only costs around 145k total, partly due to the Thunderbeast barter and partly because of the cheapness of the Krebs handguard. Regarding ammo, you do want to be using M856A1 rounds with this weapon and stacking M855A1 over the 56A1 in your magazines once you can access it at Peacekeeper 4 for maximum effect in raid, combined with the longevity of your ammunition supply. So with all that, let's go and check out a few situations to see how it performed.
The AK-101 downside coming to uh, the forefront, which is that M856A1 is not that good against a geared player, and you only have 30 rounds. Yes, yeah, so he's running class 5 probably, which is why I died. God, I'm actually like, oh, that was a crazy fight. That was a crazy fight. Wasn't he using the 101 as well? Not sure, but he got the reload off, you see, because I, I rushed him instead of uh, reloading a second time. Yeah, I feel like just playing it slightly more chilled at the start. Just because we had such a huge fight around this area last time. Which I wonder, yeah, I wonder. Because you can literally spawn in that room. Dude, some of these street spawns, freaking rough, my friends. I mean, that was nasty. I wasn't expecting anyone to be in there, but apparently you can be in there. That's genuinely awful. I wonder if it's just one. Looks like it. I mean, that's that like that truly sucks, right? I was to for you, my first tanks of his often. Um, mine's not too bad with my new CPU. It's pretty good, but um, I know that it can be pretty bad for some people. Who that? It's a real person. They went in their inventory. Sounds like they're using... Golden Star, something. <laughs> we just made literally no noise, so not really his fault he died there. I don't think he really could have done much about that. He's called Rip Bozo though, so Loki deserves it, you know. Okay, I've still got one break. Aim punch after him? Yeah. I lost a mag somewhere. Should be like here? No? Where's my mag? There it is. <laughs> What's he got? I've not seen one of these. Amazing. RPK. I guess we do we do swap this. Okay. Right. GG's. The second kill was more fair. The first the first one The first one the guy just got really unlucky. What's this building? This is Pinewood. Let's go. Oh, this thing. I know, look it's insane. It's insane. Uh uh uh, okay. It's a packet of pineapple juice. We'll drink it. Yep. Yikes. Hot rod, lovely.
Am I completely out of ammo? Should have bought more mags, eh? Always happens when you don't have a lot of mags. I know, normally I never need them. First time I've like properly run out of bullets with the uh, 101. Those guys just wouldn't die. Box shot go through zero diamond? Yes. Yeah, I don't know if there's anybody else up here. It's still blood. Okay, this is the top. Okay, so that's that's that then. I'm actually running out of ammo. We, we have indeed, we have indeed used the bullets. That is, that is how it goes. I know, I'll go, I'll go back in two secs. Okay, so we didn't, we didn't kill anybody there. Wasn't anybody here, right? No one on that side. Marzis. This is our this is our guy from chat. Okay, one on one enjoy, yes. Just to see what we got got going on in here. Damn. Must have been more. Must have been waiting. But it's okay. It's fine. We I wonder how many we killed. Yeah. I couldn't uh what's the word? Clear the whole street. But it's okay. It's alright. Look at that, we killed, we killed three people. It's, it's pretty good though. I'm, I'm pretty pleased with that. Next up, go and check out my video on some of the other guns that received huge buffs to their stats in the latest update. Otherwise, as usual, a big shout out to all my patrons. Hit all the buttons if you enjoyed the video. And as always, have fun in your raids.